Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit, and in this video, we're gonna talk about Coros's new Training Hub portal that's available on any browser in any device. Basically, it could be your laptop or desktop computer or even a tablet. Previously, using a Coros device like this Coros Vertex 2 I have here, uh, all the information that was logged through the watch was only available in your phone app, which was okay, but I know a lot of people complained that other competitors like Garmin and Polar, for instance, have a full-blown web portal where you can access all this information on a desktop computer, which can be a little bit easier to digest with a larger screen and more real estate. So Coros has heard these complaints loud and clear and has rolled out this new platform called the Coros Training Hub, which actually has some unique features to it. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Before you get too excited, it's not actually available today as of this recording, but it will be available to 2000 beta users on December 7th. In the public rollout of this platform will be on December 31st, and that will be for for all Coros users. So on New Year's Eve, you'll get that little gift from Coros, and this is available for all Coros users. That could be a Pace 2, it could be a Coros Apex, Apex Pro, Vertex, or Vertex 2, or even that original Pace that I don't have on the table here. Every Coros user will have this feature available to them. I should mention this is also a free upgrade. You don't have to pay any money for this. There's no monthly subscription or anything like that. This is just a uh, general upgrade to the Coros ecosystem. Okay, now that you've got all the details about the launch, let's look at the actual training hub. Okay, so what you're looking at here is my personal training hub, and this is my dashboard. And as you can see, the design of this training hub is very similar to the Coros phone app. And it's kind of nice that they look the same because they kind of act the same too. It's kind of like a continuation of the phone app, but on your computer with a bit more information. So going through the information on the dashboard here, you can see starting on the top left, we've got my marathon level, and this is just an indication of my fitness for running. To the right of that, we've got my seven day fatigue trend, and then my seven day running performance. The next row down, we've got all of my recent workouts, my fatigue status, and my seven day workout training load. And then if I scroll down a bit more, we also have my threshold heart rate zones, my threshold pace zones, future plans, which we'll talk about in a minute. And below that are all of my personal running records. This running records thing is pretty cool because you can actually sort this from weeks all the way to half the year, or you can go and click all, and that'll just aggregate all of your information and pull all of your records from your entire history. And to the right of that, we do have a race predictor. And again, this information is available on the phone app and on your watch, but now we have it available here in the training hub as well. As of the filming of this video, there are a few glitches in the website. For instance, these little info buttons don't actually do anything yet, but I'm sure they'll have this all sorted out by the time they launch it. Quick interruption, if you find this video helpful or entertaining or fun, uh, maybe give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below because it really helps me out. Okay. Back to the video. Okay, so now that we've talked about the dashboard, this is just kind of your general training information from all of your recent activities. We can also dive over to the next tab and that is the Evo Lab metrics. So a while back, Coros introduced Coros Evo Labs, which introduced a bunch of advanced training tools to all Coros users. And I have a whole video about that that I'll link up here. I'm not gonna dive into the specifics of each of these because I've already talked about them in that video. So go check that out if you wanna learn about Coros's Evo Labs. In this video, I'm just gonna show you how they lay out this information in the Coros Training Hub platform. So on the top left here, we have training load management, and this compares your base fitness, your load impact, and fatigue over time. And you can actually click on this little icon here, which blows it up even bigger on the screen, where you can actually sort different metrics to overlay on the graph. For instance, if I also wanted to show my marathon level, I can click that, and there's my marathon level there in that kind of gray color at the top. To the right of training load management, we also have training summary, which is just all of my information from the past four weeks. You can see I've got a total distance of 60 miles. Of course, this isn't all of my mileage because I also wear other devices. This is just my Coros mileage. There's also my total activity time, my average heart rate, how many activities I did per week, and also my total load. Scrolling down, we have a graph for workout data where you can display training load, distance, or active time in individual weeks. And if you click on something like distance, for instance, it'll actually show you on a graph how many miles you did on a given week. And the cool thing is you can hover over these graphs and get an indication on how many hard miles you did versus how many easy miles you did. To the right of the workout data graph, we have a marathon level and running performance graph. Below that, we have our four week intensity distribution. Then we have a VO2 max graph here for estimated VO2 max. And you can see mine dropped a little bit recently. That's a bummer. Scrolling down even further, we have our seven day total training load over the past four weeks. To the right of that, we have resting heart rate over the past 12 weeks. And then at the bottom here, you have your pace zone distributions for the past four weeks. 
threshold heart rate and pace, distance zone distribution, and threshold heart rate zone distribution. So as you can see, going through this Evo Labs tab, there is a crap load of information here. And if you're in a deep training cycle, there is a lot of useful information that you can gain from looking at these graphs. I personally really like how this is designed. It's all laid out on one page. You're not fiddling around by going through various different sections of the website. Everything's just right there. The next tab we're looking at here is called workout list. And as you can assume, it's just a list of all of my activities. And you can go all the way back in time through your history to find a certain activity. The nice thing about this is you can actually sort it by activity type, whether it be running or hiking or uh, biking or anything like that. You can also sort it by, by date range if you want to, and you can search by keyword. One really useful feature of this new workout list page that's available is this import data button at the top right here. As a person that uses multiple devices from Garmin, Sunto, Koros, Polar, just about everybody out there, it's pretty awesome to see this import data button because it means I can go for a run with my Garmin and actually import it into the Kroos ecosystem and have it count towards my mileage and all of my goals. Unfortunately, it still doesn't take into account your training load if you import stuff. You can see here on December 2nd, I have a Garmin activity that doesn't show training load. That might be a glitch for now. The nice thing about this new training hub is that you can actually click into an individual activity and get all the information about that activity. As you can see here, this is actually an ultra marathon I ran yesterday at a local 50K. And you can see at the top there, I've got all of my pace graphs for the entire 32 miles I ran. You can scroll down and see all of my splits below that. And you can add any more information that you wanna see here by clicking this little toggle icon and you can bring in any various information like max heart rate or stride ratio. I'm not gonna add that now. To the right here, we've got a map of the course you can see on the top right. And below that, you've got a summary of the activity showing the 31.8 miles and the eight hours it took me to achieve that. And then below that, you've got all of your zones. So heart rate zones and pace zones. And finally at the bottom here is a comment section. And this actually ties into the other features of the training platform that I'll talk about in a little bit. The final tab I wanna talk about in this video on the Chorus Training Hub platform is called Called calendar and as you can assume it's a calendar but it's a very useful calendar so you can see here at the bottom if I scroll up and down you can see all of my past activities and this is actually a really nice way to view them to see what you did on a given week and then on the right here it shows totals for that week in scrolling down you can also see that I added in the Tark Fells winter 50k that I did yesterday as an event in the calendar just to remind myself that I had it coming up and to plan for in my training this is actually really useful so so if I go into today and I click the plus sign here, I can add in a manual training session that could be a run or a ride that I forgot to start my watch. I can actually add that in manually here. Then I can go in and add a workout. So if I'm building a training plan or a strength training plan or workout routine, I can add those in for individual days. And finally, I can add in events. So if you have a race coming up and you just want a visual reminder that you've got a hundred miler on your calendar, you can now add that in manually here. And then you can see that on the calendar when it's coming up and plan your training accordingly. I really like this calendar view. It's very useful and especially because it displays your base fitness and your load impact and your fatigue totals for individual weeks. So you can take it one week at a time. And I think that's really valuable for a lot of people. And at the top here is another graph. And this graph is really useful because it actually shows your base fitness level, your fatigue and your training load over time. And you can scroll over individual weeks to see how your training is paying off with your base fitness over the past several months. And if you click these other tabs up here, you can see that there's a graph for workout time over the past several months, and of course distance over the past several months. And the nice thing is that because I added in this event for the race I had, it actually shows up on this graph as well. You can see there that little yellow icon is for the event that I set up on the calendar. And this calendar view gets even better because over on the right here, you can see these two little buttons kind of floating in space that don't really move when I scroll the calendar. I can go down and pick an individual day, and then I can go up to workouts here, and you can see I have have a strength program already set up that I set up in my phone app that's synced over to the Training Hub platform. And I can go ahead and just click and drag the strength program into individual days. So if I wanna do it on the 7th, it'll add that in and there it is. There's my strength program. And now on the 7th, I know I need to do that. I can start the activity on my watch. It'll sync over to the Chorus Training Hub. It's pretty sweet. And again, we do have a training plan button up here. And of course I can take this and I can just drag that into my calendar view as well and say that I wanna start my training plan on the 13th. 
and it'll go ahead and populate the training plan that I already pre-built in my phone app into the Coros calendar here. And even though I just started it on the 13th, it automatically propagated the 15th for a 10 mile run and the 17th for a 20 mile run because that's how my training plan was already structured. The training plan tool is already implemented in the phone app, but of course you can create your own training plans here in the web environment by clicking this little create training plan button at the bottom here. And then I can go ahead and propagate my training plan based on whatever training plan I'm using. Coros is going to continue working on this feature and they do plan on having a bunch of pre-built workouts that you can just kind of pull into the calendar. That's gonna be pretty sweet. Now let's talk about the other aspect of this and that is going to be coaching and athlete relationships within the Coros ecosystem. So if I go over here, you can see that there's a couple of icons. There's the little one person icon there that indicates that it's my platform or my dashboard, and then below that is the team view. So if I click on that, you can see that there's only one person in my team right now, that is me. But if I were a coach and I had a bunch of athletes under me, maybe I'm a coach at a high school or just a, a recreational coach helping out a bunch of friends, uh, you can see here, I could actually add these people in as athletes in my Coros training hub. This opens up a lot of windows and it's actually really interesting how this is going to work. For instance, if I had a bunch of athletes listed here, I could sort them by different metrics. So I could sort them by fatigue to show me my most tired athlete or my most refreshed athlete that's ready for a run. And in each of these windows, you'll see their marathon level, their running performance, their fatigue, and their training load for the past seven days at a glance. So at a glance, you should be able to look at your entire team of athletes and figure out who's working hard and who's hardly working. And what's interesting about this coach-athlete relationship within the Coros Training Hub ecosystem is that a coach can actually click on any individual athlete. For instance, I could click on myself here and they'll actually have full control of that athlete's dashboard. So they'll be able to add workouts to their calendar. They'll be able to set up training plans remotely and it will all sync over to that athlete's training hub, their personal training hub and sync over to their watch. And to follow up on the comment section that I talked about before, this is actually a place where coaches and athletes can talk to each other. So if I were my own coach here, I could say uh, great job. And that message will be available to the athlete. So it's a means of communication within the app. So sure, you could use text messaging or whatever, but with this, it's actually locked to the Chorus ecosystem and you can view it within the web environment. Unfortunately, the comment section is only available within the web environment on a laptop or a tablet. It's not available yet on the phone app, but Chorus is working on that and I would expect that to come out eventually in the future. In the final area of the Chorus Training Hub website is going to be the team setup page, which you can access with a little gear or cog icon on the left here. So here you can see all of the information about my make-believe team. Uh, below that is the way you actually add new members. So if a coach wanted to bring in a new athlete, they could just copy and paste the link that's provided here in an email or a text message. And all the athlete has to do is click on it and log in and they'll automatically be added to the team. And Coros has stated in their briefing information that they're going to make the coach athlete pairing process easier in the future by being able to view each other's profiles and adding a simple add or remove button right on the profile instead of having to use these links. But for now, I think this is actually pretty easy. And finally is the personal information page on the Coros Training Hub website. And if you scroll down, this is also where you can update your Evo Lab settings for your heart rate zones and your threshold pace zones. You can also update your best result here. So if you have a new PR for a marathon, you can put that in down here. And then at the bottom here, you do have privacy settings. So you, this is where you can set up how much access you wanna give your coach. And that's kind of it. That's just a quick update on this new feature coming from Coros. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it will be available to 2000 beta users on December 7th, which is great. And then everybody will get it on December 31st. I really like this platform. The only thing I think it is missing is general wellness information. For instance, if you log into Garmin Connect on a web environment, you can see all of your sleep data and step count and active calories and all of that information aggregated in Garmin Connect with graphs and you can export the data. There's a lot of granularity there. Whereas on the Coros ecosystem, they're really focusing on the training aspect and kind of ignoring all the wellness information, which is kind of interesting because that does play a role in your training. So it would be cool to see an additional tab added to the training hub for wellness, for your steps, your sleep, your active calories, all of that information. I would like to see that added to this website as well, because that would be really useful for a lot of people, I think. Anyways, as I keep saying in all these videos with 
Corvus devices, they continue to impress me with how much they're improving over time. These watches have only been out for a couple of years and they have changed the firmware so many times. They just added maps to the Corvus Vertex 1 and the Coros Apex Pro, and they just added new satellite communications to the Coros Pace 2. Uh, it's really awesome what they're doing, and they're not excluding older devices. And now with the new Coros Training Hub, they're giving you a whole bunch of added functionality through a web environment, which a lot of people prefer. And uh, yeah, I really like it. I'm, I'm happy they're going down this road. And I wanna hear from you. Are you excited about the Coros Training Hub platform? Were you on the fence about a Coros watch before, and this might swing your decision in one direction or the other? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. That is all I've got for today. Thanks for joining and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.